So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to show you how to create oak. So this is fake oak, but it looks quite effective when it's done. And we're going to start here with a panel. Okay. So I'm just going to start with this one panel. Yeah, so with this scumble, it's already mixed up. It comes in the tin like this and it's mixed up to light oak. What I've done is I've added a little bit of linseed oil to it to extend the open time. That'll give us a little bit more time with the effect. Okay. So we don't want it to start setting as soon as we've put it on. Like this. Do the mouldings and the panel. And with this, you have to do each bit in sections. We need to stop the edges and mask them up. So this might take you a couple of weeks to do this. So you'll have to do it in stages. I'll say a couple of weeks because you're only in one day a week. If it was in every day, obviously you'd be able to do one bit a day. So with a scumble, what you want to do on these corners, you want to try and take them down like that. So it's not looking like you're using a brush, it looks like the grain is coming from the corner. Yes. So we're using the angle of this moulding and getting everything relatively straight before you start your effect. So making sure I've got no sort of brush marks not brush marks, sort of where I've started with a brush. I'm going from the corners all the time. Right. Once you've got to that point, okay, just with the mouldings, I'm just going to flog them. Now I'm going to use this flogger here, okay, and what you do is you don't tap you don't tap the top of it, I think the last person's tapped the top of it. You don't use the tip of it, you use that part of it, okay? When you're going down, you're tapping that part on the door and then this part is doing the effect. All right, but because it's a moulding, I'm going to use the edge, but I'm still going to tap it in the same place. So, obviously you need to get in a few different angles with this. What you're doing here, is you just put in paw marks into the yolk. I'm just doing it in a downward direction. If I was doing mahogany, I'd go up, but with oak, it's best to go in a downward direction. You can see that I've broke up the scumble on this side. And then if you had loads of time, you'd take up and you'd do these mouldings separately. When you see a door that's been done in stages and left to dry between stages, it's much sharper on the edges. So you're trying to create wood and obviously wood is cut, so you're trying to create the effect of the wood being mitered. because you've got too much on it'll start to pull. You just want enough on, like a nice thin film to be able to create the effect. So just be careful and mindful that you've already done the mouldings. So don't, don't be tempted to rush this. You better take in your time with it. Into it, and I'm just going to lay off downwards, which in itself the brush is putting kind of like a grain in it, so you have to make sure that's nice and straight as well. So you 
from putting it on you to thinking about creating the wood effect. So, next bit, I'm going to get a metal curl. Already one in there. And I'm going to get a lint free cloth, okay? I don't want to put bits in the surface. So, I'm going to get my curl, wrap it in the lint free cloth nice and tight, because that's going to take some of the scumble off, okay? If I just do it without wrapping the rag down, you'll still get the effect, but you tend to get a little bit of pooling at the bottom of the scumble. So this takes the excess scumble off. So just holding it all in, starting at the top and just working down. You can see, it doesn't matter if you get a little wobble, grain isn't straight. because as it's got a long open town, I'm just going to have another go at that piece. So I'm happy with that. It doesn't matter if you cross over. You know if you look at oak, you look at this here, generally when you get imitation oak, it's in sections anyway, and sometimes they do overlap. So that's absolutely fine if you've done that. So the next bit, now when I said about using your flogger, make sure you're tapping it there. Okay, so I'm going to start at the top, and I'm thinking about tapping the middle. And what this does is it just breaks the veins up. And it just puts the little paw marks in the veins. Just bringing it down. Like that. So, if you want like an old weathered look on your oak, use a tick roller. Now, what the tick roller does, just puts little like nicks and marks in as if it's old and it's pitted. So you just start at the top, working down, across, down, and it's like little scratches. And you can see it if you look at it closely, you can see it's put little marks in. long open time you can mess with it as much as you want just make sure you're happy with it once you're happy with it take your rag and then just wipe off the excess scumball from around the panel because we're going to do these in sections so they won't necessarily you won't, you won't get them all done today okay this is an oil based scumball so it needs a good 24 hours to set nice and hard so what you do first, you do all your panels, okay? Then what you can do, because you're only going down, you can do your mountains, okay? So that's the end of the panel. This is how to tape up when you're doing your cross, okay? So your rails. These are your rails and this is how to mask up. So I've masked up the mountains all the way down look and I've masked up on the styles next to the rails. So this is going to protect these pieces and it's also going to give you a straight edge there but what you must do is just cut in to this one here. So I'm, I'm applying it as neat as I can. Okay. Then with a brush I'm just going to straighten it all up. So this is just a quick recap on how to do the rails. And then I'm going to get my wide toothed comb. 
wrap it around my rag again. Pushing high up, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a hopper. Yeah. So I want to be thin. I want to be at first height when I'm doing this. So I'm going to see what I'm doing. Okay. It's much better if you're right in front of the subject rather than trying to go high. Okay. So just the same as you have done on all of the panels, just take it across like this. Is gone as well. So, what we're going to do now is I'm just going to put some paw marks in. So, just as we have been doing with all the other bits, and what this is doing is you just break it up back in. Sometimes we call them veins, but obviously, veins are marbling. So, I'm getting confused. You can see that's just breaking them up now because. They're not straight grains, they have to be broken up. Okay, it makes it a lot more natural. If you look at any of you'll know what I mean. Keep the brush at the same angle. And using the brush, you're trying to tap that bit to the surface. So once you've used the flogger, then get your tick roller and do the same. And what a tick roller does, it gives it an old oak weather look. Old oak generally has a lot more scratches and indentations in it. And that is all this is doing. It just puts indentations and scratches and it's making it look weathered. And that 
mindset. Don't be tempted to use this like that. It's the slightest movement all the way down that's going to give you that open grain. So that's one side I'm going to do. The other side the same, and I'm going to varnish it, and that's going to be that finished. And at the end of it, if you've done it correct, this is how it should look. So if we go close, we can see that it actually does look like oak because we've gone through all the processes to make it look like oak. You can see how each part stops like natural wood, 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 like that. Yeah, and we've got that nice big long open grain down the side, which is another characteristic of oak. And down the other side, you can see, if we go close. So that's what your finished door, one half of your door anyway, should look like.